Hi! Uh, are you wondering what I'm doing? Well, I'm just trying to make the room smell better. That's because in this lesson, we are learning how to talk about different kind of smells. What did I just do? I just sniffed. These are the kind of words that you're going to learn with me today. My name is Michelle, and I'm glad to have you with me. So here we are, and we have some interesting words with us. We are first going to start with the word smell, which is our topic for the day, talking about smells. What are the different kind of smells that you have experienced? You've definitely experienced some good smells and also some bad smells. So smell is a neutral word that can be used for a good smell or a bad smell. But how do you understand whether it's used for a good one or a bad one? You can understand that through an example or through a context by understanding the words which are used around the word smell. So if we say that I love the smell of baked bread, obviously that's a good smell, right? So we can use it for good, a good smell. When I hear the word love, I know that it's a good smell. Then. We can also use it for a bad smell. When we say that, oh, those shoes are smelling so bad, then obviously we know that it can be used for a bad smell as well. Let's look at the next word that we have, something that stinks. So stinks also means going ahead with the bad side of the word smell, we can also use the word stinks. So something that stinks smells very unpleasant and not so nice. So you could say that, oh, the kitchen stinks. This means that the kitchen is stinking. And here the word stinks is a verb. It smells bad. We can also use the word stink as a noun by saying that, Oh, there's a real stink coming from the wash basin. Yeah, that's where you're using the word stink as a noun. So you can use it as a noun. But when you use it as a noun, there will be no S. So there's a real stink coming out of the wash basin. Now, we can also use the word stink as an adjective, not just a verb, not just a noun, a adjective, noun but also an adjective. So how do we use it as an adjective? I'll tell you. So when something is very stinky, that's how the word becomes an adjective. When we say that it is stinky. All right, and you know what? Sometimes the word stinky is also used in a positive way by trying to say how good it is. So you could say that, I love the stinky goat cheese. So because of, obviously we know that the goat cheese smells slightly bad, but you love that smell of the goat cheese because you love eating goat cheese. So sometimes you can use it positively to admire a smell. Right. The way we have stinks, in place of stinks, you can also use the word reeks, which is also used for an unpleasant smell. So you could say that the house reeks of smoke. This means that you could smell smoke almost everywhere in the house. So reeks means, it's a verb again, just like stinks, used for unpleasant smell. Used for an unpleasant smell. Right. The next word that we have is whiffy. You, the smell whiffy. So whiffy is also a negative smell, but you have it when something is slightly stale, slightly stale, not very stale. So if you've not had a bath for a number of days, then you are smelling whiffy. So when someone is not taken a bath for a couple of days and they're smelling bad, instead of saying that you're smelling bad, you could say that you're starting to get a bit whiffy, which means you're starting to smell a bit bad. So this is used for slightly rotten smell. Okay. You can also use whiffy when you're trying to say that I caught a whiff, 
means you caught a particular smell. It could be good or bad or just a particular smell. So like there's a particular smell when somebody shaves and that shaving, after shaving smell is very particular. So you could say that I caught a whiffy when he passed next to me or I caught a whiff of aftershave when I passed by him. So to catch a whiff or to get a whiff. Right, you could also use whiff with the word pungent. So pungent means a very strong and bitter smell. It's, it's more than unpleasant. It's much more than unpleasant because it's bitter and it's very, very strong. So when you go to a fish market, you get a pungent whiff. So a strong and bitter smell. So you can use pungent and whiff together by saying that when I went to the fish market, I got a pungent whiff. Right. Staying on with the negative smells, we have the next one, which is an acrid smell. So acrid is a kind of smell when you taste something burning. So if you pass a building which was on fire, which caught fire some time ago, you, you can see clouds of smoke rising from the building. And when you pass by a building like that, you have an acrid smell. And that acrid smell is when you taste the burning sensation in your throat, in your mouth, and you're just not able to uh, breathe, you're feeling choked. So acrid is a burning smell. This smell is so strong that you almost start tasting it in your mouth. I've had an experience like that. I'm sure you would have also had an experience like that. That whenever something is burning, you almost like feel like you're tasting it and you just can't breathe. The next one we have is a fetid smell. So fetid is used when something is stale, very, very stale. Like if you go into a building in which the, you know, the windows and the doors had not opened for a very long time and for years no one had been there and you go there, you are possibly buying an apartment or something like that had not opened for a long time. You get that fetid smell, that stale smell that it had not opened and there's no fresh air. So fetid is when there's lack of fresh air. and you have a stale smell. Great. The next one that we have with us is a musty smell. So musty is when you, uh, okay, this is the kind of smell that you get in a library. For some people, they love it. For some people, they don't like it too much. People who love reading books, they would love a musty smell. It's sort of, it's not actually a bad smell, but it's the kind of smell that you get from something which is damp, you know, slightly wet and very, very old. Usually papers, old papers, old books. That's the kind of smell that you get in a library. Damp and old. So you could say that I love the musty fragrance in the library and if you don't like it, you could say I love them. I, I don't like the musty smell of books. So please remove these books. Something like that. You can use it positively and negatively both. The next one that we have, putrid. Putrid is used uh, when something has decayed. It's a smell of decay. So decay is when something, you know, has completely uh, rotten, just rotten and it smells terrible. It's been like that for many days, like rotten meat. So you could say, I hate the smell of putrid meat or the rotten meat smells putrid. You could use it like that as well. Right, so with that, we come to an end of the so-called very bad smells and slightly bad smells, very bad smells. You can choose the words that you want to choose for the degree of smell that you have experienced. But now we're going to look at some good smells, which we all love. The first one that we have with us is aroma. So aroma is the kind of smell that you get from food and drinks. And it's a, it's a fragrance that makes you want to eat the food. So possibly you're smelling rice somewhere. You can smell the aroma of rice or you can smell the aroma of cheese and you want to have it. So it's a smell from food or 
drinks. And if something smells very good, you could also say that the food smells aromatic, which naturally means that the smooth, uh, food smells very good. You didn't say that the food smells good, you could say that the food smells aromatic. Right, and the scent. So scent is a particular smell, again, and a positive, uh, sorry, a good smell, just like aroma. It's a particular aroma that you get from something. So maybe, you know, if you've got two candles, two beautiful candles, they might have a scent, they might have a good smell. So you could say that both the candles that I got have a lovely scent. So a very good smell, a lovely smell. Some people also use scent in place of the word perfume, but it's not actually a correct usage. A perfume should be called a perfume and not a scent. Right. The next one that we have is a fragrance. It's a very common word and that's also the topic of our lesson. So fragrance is a sweet note that you get from flowers. And that's how you can remember this word. From F we have fragrance, from F we have flowers. So the sweet smell of flowers. So you could say that the flowers have a delicate fragrance. This means that they have a sweet and nice soft fragrance. The next one that we have is bouquet. Can you think of something related to flowers when we think of a bouquet? Yes, as a noun, bouquet also means a lot of flowers, a group of flowers packed together and when you offer it to someone that you love very much. But bouquet otherwise, again as a noun, it also means a particular type of fragrance. It's a good fragrance, it's a good smell. That's why it's a fragrance. And this is the fragrance that you get from wine or liquor, any sort of liquor. So the smell of a liquor. So you could say that my favorite uh, white wine is my favorite. White wine from Umbria region is my favorite because it has got an oaky bouquet. Okay, uh, oaky is a particular type of trees and this is the kind of fragrance that you get from white wine. So you could say that white wine has an oaky bouquet and not an oaky fragrance because here you're talking about wine. So whenever you talk about the aroma from liquor, you would use the word bouquet. The next one that we have is gives off, something that gives off. So he, this is a phrasal verb because it has a preposition and a verb. And you can use them together to talk about the fragrance or the smell that comes out of something. So you could say that rusting iron gives off a strange smell. This means a strange smell comes out of rusting iron. So gives off means comes out. And you can use this phrase to talk about all of these smells, not just one of them. So I hope this was helpful for you and you can talk more about the kind of fragrance that you like and the smells that you so don't like. And thanks for having me. I hope you had a great time. Bye-bye.